Well, obviously I've got the engine running now. I've only just started it. You can see there, we've got good oil circulation and the oil circulating appears to be very clean. So that's a good sign. And actually, at the moment, the engine sounds all right, but it did sound all right until I put it under load by actually riding the bike the other day. I can feel that when I open the throttle, I can feel that harshness I felt in the handlebars. Anyway, I'm going to carry on warming the engine up and then I'm going to look to see if there's any play that can be detected between the pistons and the crank. Well, we've got a very hot engine here now and um, something popped into my head. I thought I'd just try anyway. Even though I strode time the ignition time in the other day and got the uh, full advance line lining up with the pointer at full advance it occurred to me that I might just try backing off the ignition timing just retarding it a little to see if it had any effect on how harsh the engine felt and um, it certainly has so what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure probably should have done it anyway, but I'm going to make sure that the um, timing line on the alternator rotor on the other side here, I'll take this cover off again and I'll check with the um, plunger in the spark plug hole how far before top dead center in uh, inches or millimeters if you prefer the line coincides with the pointer because Actually, it's all very well strobe timing something and lining up the full advance line with the pointer, but who's to say that that is in the right position? Now, it's a long shot and it may not be the answer, but uh, I like to eliminate the simple stuff first. So I'm just going to make sure that this thing wasn't actually over advanced because the engine is hot now, I can barely touch it, and it's sounding fine. And the um, harshness I felt through the handlebars, even when not under load, seems to have eased considerably since I've retarded the ignition timing. So I'm just wondering. It's got to be worth a shot. Maybe. The ignition timing was actually over advanced when the lines, the pointer and the line lined up. So I'm just going to make sure that they are correct. And if not, I may try this up and down the lane with the timing backed up quite a few degrees. I've probably knocked about five degrees off it, I would say. Possibly even a little more. But it sounds. Uh, It doesn't sound flat like something that's over retarded, so it might be worth giving that the benefit of the doubt. But while I'm here, I'm going to check the, uh, the, the primary chain tension as well, and then I think um, I'll check the uh, timing line against piston position, and then I'll make a decision as to whether I want to try it out on the road again and see what happens. So that's the next move. Well. The primary chain tension checks out all right. I haven't removed the spark plugs yet, but at or around mid-stroke, whether the camera will pick this up or not, I hope it might, I can rotate the crank backwards and forwards by a small number of degrees there. <clears throat> with a bit of a clonk at either end of it which suggests to me possibly some play in a big end or both big ends 
I'm sure the camera will pick up the sound of that. I'll try it again with the spark plugs removed with uh, something through the plug hole to sort of feel if possible what the piston crowns are doing relative to that but I've got a feeling that that's either at a big end or a small end it's certainly <clears throat> we got some free movement between the crank and at least one of the pistons there I would suspect at the moment so um, I get the plugs out and see uh, what that tells me Okay, so this method of uh, rotating the crank backwards and forwards, at or around mid-stroke in particular, is quite a good way of picking up any uh, discernible play in a big end. And in this case, I've had the, uh, the screwdriver in and felt the uh, crown of the piston as I've done it as well. Obviously I can't do that while I'm holding the camera, but the camera might pick up this sound. There's a very, very tiny degree of something which is so small that it could even be a little bit of piston slap or something. The engine is hot. There's nothing to scare the wits out of me there, really. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick to plan A and um, check what we're actually getting when the full advance line is lined up with the pointer uh, in relation to the piston position in the stroke, the bore, because um, if this was actually over advanced through uh, poor marking and my retard in the ignition has eased what it sounds like and feels like, things may be okay for the foreseeable. I mean, I wouldn't describe this as uh, sounding and feeling like a brand new engine, but so far what I've come across doesn't sort of say that it's totally shot and needs taken to bits. That could all change perhaps when I take the subplate off and uh, have a look and see what that might have picked up because I'll do that as well. Um, I'll let it cool down and I'll get the tank off and the rocker cover off and I'll do the uh, valve clearances. And then I'll make a decision as to uh, what I might do next. But uh, things aren't quite as horrific um, in this department, at least, as what I was beginning to expect. I've just been checking off the um, ignition timing full advance mark against piston position from top dead centre. And interestingly enough, I found out that the uh, the line on the rotor lines up with the pointer nine millimeters before top dead centre, which I know is excessive. And I've just been checking here. I've got the figures here: ignition timing, fully advanced, all models, 34 degrees before top dead centre, or 0.304 inches. Now. At first glance, that doesn't seem to tell me much, but I know that 9mm is pretty damn much 0 0.360 inches. Now, 0.3 inches is more like 7.5mm. So, when I strobe the timing in to make the line line up with the pointer, the piston was actually a millimetre and a half further down the bore than it should have been at full advance, which doesn't sound a lot, but when you convert that into degrees, that's quite a bit. So um, I'll be putting another mark on the rotor at seven and a half millimetres before top dead centre. And um, although I've got to say that uh, I will mark it and I'll test it by strobe, but I reckon that the amount I've retarded it by will probably put it roughly uh, where I wanted it anyway. So I'm not saying that this is going to be a cure, but it may well have been a cause. Um, and I'm going to 
carry on and just get the sump plate off and just check for any unpleasantness there. And if that's clear, I will ride the bike again, certainly up and down the lane, if no further, and see what it feels like and sounds like, just in case, because you never know. Sometimes these simple things can make a hell of a difference. And yes, there could be a degree of wear in the engine. I don't know the history of it or whether I... I don't know that it's been rebuilt or not or whatever. The owner tells me that the uh, people he bought it off who restored it may have taken the cylinder head off. Um, but you can have engines with acceptable levels of wear in them and other engines where the levels of wear are unacceptable. And uh, I'm going to have to sort of mull this over and discuss it with the owner. But like I say... I'll get to the point where I'll give it another go up and down the lane and see what it feels like compared with what it felt like the other day and then I'll make an assessment and uh, perhaps a decision can be made as to what happens next. Right, well I've um, now established where 7.5 millimetres before top dead centre is on this machine and I'm hoping that the torch will sort of light this up well enough for the camera to pick up without it being too sort of blurry or glary but there's not a huge amount in it but you can see that the uh, the line and the pointer have quite a significant gap between them it's not huge but um, it probably equates to about five degrees or so so um, we were around about five degrees over advanced when the line and the pointer were lining up with each other. So, although I assumed that the ignition timing was correct, in actual fact it wasn't. And I have come across this previously, and um, sometimes it's always worth actually checking the piston position up the bore in the stroke relative to the marker. Just to make sure, because there can be errors um, when you think that the rotor is just sort of pushed onto a keyway on the crankshaft. There's a lot of room and margin for error, especially if and when you start getting a little bit of wear in the keyway or the key itself or something, and perhaps the rotor fits but wobbles about like that until you tighten the nut up or something. It's always worth a look, as it was in this case. So. I'll make a new mark where it should be at the uh, seven and a half millimetres before top dead centre position and then I'll um, at some point I'll strobe it again although the engine's cooling down nicely now so what I'll probably do first is take the fuel tank and rocker box cover off and have a look at the valve clearances then when I've done all that I think I'll get it off the bike lift and just try it up and down the lane and then I'll decide if I want to go any further on it or whether I want to put it back on the bike lift and speak to the owner with a view to taking the engine apart. So um, that's where we'll be heading next. Well I've taken care of the valve clearances now on this machine and they were all rather sloppy so I've taken all four of them up and uh, that should reduce any top end clatter a little bit. Um, I've also taken off the sump plate off the crankcase to have a look at the uh, scavenge pickup strainer and that's spotlessly clean there's no big chunks of metal on it or anything like that so um, and the oil that came out is clean looking which sort of ties in with what I saw returning to the oil tank so I'm going to put this back on and I think I probably will after I strobe it, just to sort of confirm the ignition timing, give it another try up and down the lane and see what it's like. And uh, then we'll see where it goes from there.